Hello, everyone. This is a short video to introduce you to a couple of features in our new 1.8 software release, which is for the EOS family of products, including EOS, Ion, and Element. The first of those features is called Mirror Mode. Mirror is intended primarily for use at the tech table by the lighting designer or perhaps at the stage manager's panel. And it allows any device on the network to mimic exactly the displays of the host device. And it's probably going to be easiest just to show you a short demo. Let's take a look at mirror mode. For the purposes of this example, we're using an RPU connected to an EOS. We're going to mirror the have the we're going to set the RPU as our mirroring device. So we open up our browser on the mirroring device and we come to our displays tab here. And at the bottom of the displays is the mirror mode selection and mirror mode option. On a large scale system, you may have uh, where you have multiple devices, you may have other thing, uh, other choices here. Most of us are going to have probably this kind of configuration where it's one device connecting to another. This might be an ion connecting to an EOS in our application. This is an RPU. So I'll double click that and we're now in mirror mode. So if I select a group of channels, you can see that not only does the command line mirror, but so does the, the channel display. Uh, it selects where we're going. There are two features, two functions you can do from the mirroring device. The first is you can change pages. So if you're at the tech table, you can bump the pages around. And that was from the mirroring device. You'll have to take my word for it that the console was changing pages at the same time. And we'll get to what the other feature is here in just a moment. So for instance, if I want to come into my color picker, you can see that the mirroring device uh, pops the CIA back up. Now, you may want the CIA popping up and down, or maybe not. If we want to leave it open from this screen, we come over here to the little lock symbol and we click it. And now as we select the browser and make changes, the CIA will stay active, uh, will stay up and change uh, accordingly. There are, uh, yeah, so the other thing we can do is we can collapse the CIA by hitting F9 twice, and that drops it down. Now as we make changes from the console, the CIA will stay collapsed. So even if I come back and activate the color picker, the CIA stays stays um, stays uh, hidden. Maybe this is what we want, maybe it isn't, but it's just an option that you have. To get the CIA back open, you tap F9 on the keyboard and it opens us up into the mirror mode display. We can unlock it if we choose to. This is the other thing you can do from mirror mode, which is uh, start and stop mirror mode, or you can exit the uh, exit or power off the console. If you're in mirror mode and you power off, when you reboot the device, it'll come back up in mirror mode, which is why we uh, why we kind of default you into the screen. You can also then unlock it, and we're kind of back to where we were at the beginning, and that's kind of that's a look at mirror mode. Concurrent with the release of 1.8, it's also possible now to use any PC running the offline software on the network without a client dongle. When that PC connects to the network in this way, it's only possible to operate it in mirror mode. The second feature that we'd like to talk to you about is FAN. And FAN is a method, either from the command line or using encoders, to distribute data across a selection of fixtures in a number of different ways. And again, just a short demo. Let's take a look at the fan function. Fan allows data to be distributed across a range of channels, uh, a range of data across a range of channels. So uh, there are two ways to do this. One is from the command line. The other is using encoders. So let's take a look at the probably the easiest way, which is going using the uh, command line function. So if we select a group of channels, Group 7 happens to be a, a group of LEDs lighting our psych in our visualization program. So we've put them at full. If we want to distribute or fan the intensities, we simply go at a level of 1 through 100. So then what the console is going to do is take that range of intensities and distribute it across our channel selection, in this case our group 7. You can see in the visualizer and in the channel display how that math works out. So it's fairly straightforward and, and easy to use. A couple of other ways we can do this are using the encoders. And we'll take a look at the next one using color. So we're going to put group 7 back at full on the console. I'm going to turn on the color picker. I'm going to put them into a color. 
our fan button, which is directly above sneak. We select fan and hit enter. We're now in fan mode. So when we interact with the encoder, the console is going to distribute the channels around a range or across that range uh, as we move the encoder. So you can see both on the visualizer again and the hue category of the channel display, the distribution as we turn the encoder farther into the farther along, you can see that the math continues to distribute that distribute the colors uh, across our range of channels. So we're going to take Q7 or group 7 out. I'm going to select another range of channels. And I'm going to put them at a focus point that I created earlier. They're lined up along the psych in the order of the channel selection. So uh, channel, in this case, 301 is on the left and running across our list. We can use a similar technique by selecting fan and putting it into fan mode, enter. We can now use tilt to run the fixtures along a, uh, along a fan or distribute the tilt feature. So what's happening is, is the console is, uh, it, the fan feature is anchoring the first fixture of our channel selection. So depending on how you group them, will determine that first anchor point. We can also modify that by selecting fan again. And you'll notice that the soft keys remap. And the first one is center. So we go fan center and then enter using tilt again. We're now anchoring off our center point. I can accomplish a similar feature uh, using our command line. We select tilt on, we post tilt onto the command line, and we select a range for the tilt to run. Uh, looking at our channel display, you'll notice that tilt is running a set of negative numbers. So if we go minus 50 through minus 90 and enter, we get a similar distribution in a, uh, as we did previously. It's tilting along the entire channel selection. But let's take a look at a couple more features that we can do by using the encoders. So selecting, uh, putting our channels back in our command, in our row, in our focus point, we select fan again. From center, we can select reverse and enter. And we're just gonna walk through these pretty quickly. And we get an anchor on the opposite side. Back to our focus point fan mirror mode gives us a center anchor point again, but instead of an equal distribution, we now mirror the distribution across the channels. So we'll kind of line them back up, go back into fan. Repeat and cluster can both be given numbers, which will impact the distribution uh, path. So a repeat of two gives us every other fixture. So it anchors every second fixture. If we go fan and cluster, and we'll do a cluster of two, cluster is going to give us an anchor from the anchor point, it's going to group two fixtures together. And if you, as you're looking at the visualizer, you can see that it's fanning groups of two as opposed to an equal fan. So the cluster gives us the ability to, to rearrange the distribution. And the last one is to go fan random enter and the console picks a random anchor point and gives us a random distribution of the fan. So these are all very dynamic features that give you some, give you flexibility in terms of how you use fan. And that's kind of taking a look at it. For a full description of these features and other changes in 1.8, you can go to our website, www.etcconnect.com. And on the products download pages, you'll find a 1.8 supplement for the 1.7 user manual, and there is also a description of these features on the EOS ION and Element user forums. The last thing about 1.8 is that ION is now available in three different varieties, additional varieties. Um, you can order ION now with either five or six universes of control. That's the ION 2500 and the ION 3000. And also the ION RPU is now available in up to six universes. If you have an existing ION or ION RPU that you'd like to upgrade, you can contact either your dealer or our customer service here at ETC. Thanks very much.